Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. This is a continuation of a video I made recently when I had lost my voice. My voice is back, so I feel I'd like to explore this subject just a little bit more and hopefully you will find it helpful. And I'm really asking the question, with everything which is against us a lot of the time and how difficult it can be to be a musician, why do we bother to make music at all? Now before we delve into this, I'd like to thank the sponsor for this video, DistroKid. If you follow the link in the description down below, you'll get 7% off an already amazing price to distribute your music to the world. I was rummaging through an old shoebox of keepsakes recently and I found this old photograph of me holding my first ever electric guitar. I was about 15 years old at the time. It was the early 1980s. The UK was in recession. My father had been unemployed and there wasn't much money around. But somehow I managed to scrape together just enough money to buy this off of something called a Little Woods catalogue. Now, UK viewers may remember this. It was a catalogue which had just about everything for the house in it, and for a weekly amount, you could pay things off over, I think, 20 or 38 weeks. And I managed to, you know, use some pocket money and doing some odd jobs and things, managed to buy this guitar. The brand was K, if I remember rightly, and this guitar was an absolute piece of crap. It was really awful. It was basically a piece of plywood with some strings and magnets on there. Um, it had awful intonation, awful machine heads. The neck was bent, you know, it was just dreadful to play. Um, so much so that when I ended up doing my first gig, my high school gig with my high school band, which is, we're in this photo here, um, for the night I had to borrow a guitar off of a friend and it was a Fender of some kind and I can still remember playing that guitar and it felt like absolute heaven to play a proper instrument. But I battled on and by the end of high school I'd managed to buy another guitar but it was still not a very good guitar, just marginally better. You can see it here. I think it was an Encore or something like that. Um, the equivalent of a cheap sort of Chinese brand now that you may buy off of Wish or something like that. But it was more playable at least. Now I wish I could tell you that um, this story had a really nice ending at this point. That although I had terrible equipment, um, that I had loads of talent and it made all the difference. But that's not true. Also in my shoebox of keepsakes, I found this little note here. It's from my um, high school music teacher who for some reason did an assessment of my high school band. And for my part, for the bad part, um, he said that I would never be a great axe hero, meaning I'll never be a great guitar player. Um, encouraging words, hey, but that was the bad part. For the good part, he said, um, <laughs> he, he said that I uh, knew my limitations and I played well within them. That was the good part. Hardly encouraging words there. So you would think, look, if I didn't have the gear and I didn't have the encouragement and I didn't have the talent, you know, why did I even bother past that point? All I can say is that by that point, I just had music in me and somehow I just had to do it. So much of my 20s was spent playing in a band in the UK. A lot of time spent in the back of a van at dingy venues, but thankfully we managed to find some venues where we could play our own material, okay? And looking back, I learned so much during those years about writing, about arranging for a band, about the way different elements of a band work together. And I'm so thankful for those years as well as the camaraderie and just the experiences involved there. Now, towards the end of my late 20s was the first time that I began to record some music at home on something you would call a door. I think we were on kind of 486s or Pentium PCs back then, and there was this piece of software called Digital Orchestra Pro or Plus or something like that. And the point was, not only could you record MIDI, etc., and it had some onboard sounds, but you could also record audio. This was fantastic for me. It meant that I could express myself in ways that I couldn't express myself with the band, you know, using string sounds or whatever I wanted to use. And that was when I started this journey. Now, there was nothing for me to work with in terms of tutorials. I had been in some studios with the band, but I didn't really know much about the recording process. So I just had to learn through trial and error. There was no YouTube or anything like that. 
and that's what I did. So in the early 2000s, I came to Australia and that was the first time that I began to perform solo, just my voice and a guitar playing small venues, but still again playing my own material. And thankfully I found places where the audience was receptive to that. Then sort of during that time, through a series of chance meetings, etc., I ended up becoming the state coordinator for the Australian Songwriters Association. So I was in contact with a lot of songwriters, trying to encourage them, trying to get exposure for them, etc. Then through another series of chance meetings and circumstances, I ended up being the producer on a local TV show, which was about music creation, about local music creation. That's a whole story in itself, but I really wasn't qualified for this position, nor did I have the experience, but I had to learn quick and learn the hard way. It was a very intense time, I remember. But you know, there was an element of uh, visual production in there. We were at live venues recording people, and then there was some audio production involved with that as well. And I started to get a little bit more experience, but still to this day, I would not call myself a music producer, but it did add to my experience in that way. So the next phase of my life, I think is gonna sound really familiar to many of you. I'm gonna call it the break, okay? What happened was I got married, I had some kids, and I felt really strongly that I should probably provide a stable kind of life for them, especially financially, and the musician's life just wasn't that. So I gave up music at that time, and again, through uh, uh, some chance meetings and some coincidences, I ended up becoming a project manager, and then finally a vice president of a social network in Asia. I worked in Hong Kong and it was a pretty big social network at the time and that was kind of what my life was okay. At one time I think you know I just hardly played guitar at all maybe for about five or six years definitely I didn't really make any music at all. Now I finally came back to Australia where I had a job as a project manager for a large ISP I think the largest internet service provider in Australia at the time and that was the life I was living you know the suit and tie working in the big glass building and it would have made no sense for me at all at that time to give all of that up and just become a musician again but that is exactly what I did. Now I didn't just become any type of musician, I became a street musician, or is it sometimes called a busker. I think after working in the corporate world with all its restrictions and timetables, I wanted the freedom of playing music on my terms. I didn't even want to book gigs and turn up at a particular time and kind of turn myself on and play. I wanted to play music in the way I wanted to play it. Now. I have to say, I actually made a very good living out of this, surprisingly so. I think even better than I had when I was doing gigs before, to be honest with you. And I learned so much during this time. Never look down on a professional street musician. It is a skill and an art unto itself. I had nothing to hide behind. I didn't use amplification. It was just me, my guitar, and my voice. And I learned something super important during that time, which my high school music teacher hadn't imparted to us. And that was, I didn't really need to be like a virtuoso guitarist or singer. I had to be at a be competent in it but the most important thing and the most important thing which made people throw money at me was playing with passion and emotion investing myself in the song every single time understanding what the song was about what the meaning of it was and putting my all into that and connecting with people it was like a light bulb moment really it just changed the way that i uh, played music for people and it was a really important stage of my life now i became like very proficient during that time because i just had to rely on me in terms of uh, my music but i still was i'm still not a particularly um, talented or skillful uh, guitarist or singer um and you know at times i'll reveal to you that it can make me feel like a little bit of a fake, to be honest with you. I'll give you an example. Uh, last year, a few months ago, I made a video about one of my guitars, a Taylor nylon string guitar. And in that video, you may want to watch it later, um, I played a kind of a pseudo-classical piece of music, which is not 
really what I do at all, but I love the piece of music so much I really wanted to play it. Now, I've since I put that out, it's got a few thousand views. I've received a lot of compliments on that video, people saying how much they enjoyed it, etc. And this is the part where I felt a bit fake, because I have to tell you that to, in order to play that piece of music for that video, I started off learning it by ear, um, and that took me probably a few months to learn it all the way through, okay? And then it took me a while to even be able to play it all the way through, and then a little while longer to play it all the way through without any mistakes. And then I spent some time trying to refine um, the kind of emotional approach that I wanted to put into the piece of music. But quite a number of months, really the best part of a year or something, learning that piece of music now in the video it just looks like i play like that all the time i can promise you that look and the thing that makes me feel bad is i know that some of you out there are good enough guitar players that you could probably learn it within a week or two or maybe quicker maybe you could sight read it and just play it so um thank thankfully there's all the smoke and vi mirrors of video production and sound production but yeah um but that's okay i just I don't want you to feel bad if you feel like you always struggle to get things to that level. I think for many of us mere mortals, um, it's still the case that we have to work pretty hard at it. So I'm at a stage in my life now where I'm no longer seeking commercial success for my music at all. I do make music and my target audience is just really a few family members and friends, a few hundred people probably at the most. And some of it you get to see, some of it you don't. Some of it is just in that small group. But I believe I put just as much effort into pr the quality of that music, even though it's only going out to a small pool of people. Now, I probably wouldn't bother to release it commercially at all to places like Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, etc. if it wasn't for the fact that it is really, really easy and really, really cheap. I'll touch on our sponsor a little bit again, DistroKid, because I release my music through DistroKid. And once you've created that piece of music, it's just a matter of getting a bit of artwork, which, you know, you can either design yourself, there's different ways to create artwork. You upload that uh, to DistroKid, you upload your song. There's a bit of a form to fill in. And then, you know, they do it all for you. They get it out to Spotify and iTunes and Amazon, etc for you so it, it's there's no resistance to releasing your music you know around the world and look if someone happens to discover that piece of music and they enjoy it and it you know brings something to them then i'm glad it's out there doing that so i guess the question is and the point of this video is look if i'm not all that talented and i'm not looking for any commercial success like why do i bother making music at all so hold on to your seats, folks, because I'm going to get a little bit philosophical with you. Now, some years ago, when I was still a street musician, I used to perform with my nephew, Chaz, who's a talented singer and songwriter. And we did this duet thing together, and it went down really well with the crowds, and we had a lot of fun doing it most of the time. But on this one particular day, we hadn't really connected with the crowd. It was awful weather, and we were on our way home with not much to show for it. And Chaz said to me, Mike, why do we do this? And I said to him then what I'm going to say to you now. It's not a question of why do we do this. It's a question of how can we not do it? It's who we are. See, this is the way I see the universe. I see it as this kind of integrated organism with a lot of moving parts which are all really necessary. We've got the flowers and the trees and the oceans and the wind and everything in the universe. And one of the beings which is required in this universe at the moment is human beings. And amongst those human beings, we need the types which are going to be doctors and farmers and nurses and teachers and all kinds of different human beings. And because human beings seem to love music so much, we need some human beings who are going to be musicians. The universe needs us to be what we are. I want you to ask yourself, not why am I going to keep doing this, but how can I not do this? I believe that for many of us, it's almost like our destiny. It's what we are supposed to be. And I think that if you honor that, if you honor what the universe is asking you to be, you're going to be a much happier 
person. Now, even though you may not be the most talented or the most skillful on your instrument, you can find a way to connect to people. And that is the value in making music. Also, the process itself is so much fun. I really enjoy the process still. I really enjoy making music in my home studio and the great opportunity we now have to do that. And I hope you'll continue to join me on that journey. Now, I'd love to hear from you now in the comments down below about your story with music. Where have you come from? Where are you going? What does music mean to you? Why do you continue to do it. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next video.